Hello all, welcome to Netto and welcome back to Newsoft. Today I'm planning to talk about data view. What is data view and where we should use it? In Mulesoft applications, we use this data view. What is the purpose of using this? It is mainly used for transforming the data and translation of the data we use it. In my previous videos, I talked about Hello World, uh, Customer API and all, where I have used some data view code but I never explained how to write that code and all. We are going to learn over here. The data view, first of all, you need to understand why should you use and how to write it this code. In any Mule application, if you see, most of the coding will be drag and drop mechanism, but you will have a 20% of coding where you have to write a scripting. That is a data view coding scripting you are going to write. But this 20% of code makes sense when you are implementing a Mule application. Let me discuss one of the scenario. Imagine you have a SFTP server where you will have a CSV files. You need to pull those data and send it to the Salesforce by validating those data and send it to the Salesforce. Now, in CSV file, the data is in the ROS format. That is a CSV file format. Now, you need to send it that data to Salesforce. That should be in the Java object. The structure also might be different. The data transformation is main important over here, right? How exactly can be done it? We are implementing a Mule application to integrate this SFTP to Salesforce. And for data transformation, we are going to use data view code. I hope you got some idea now. So mostly MuleSoft is used, you know, involved data transformation. Either it might be the API, it might be any integration application. So for the data transformation, we are going to use data view. Let's see. So the data view is a Mule expression language, which is mainly used for transforming the data and accessing the data throughout your Mule flow in your Mule application. And it is tightly coupled with the Mule runtime. As soon as you write some data view code and deploy into server, internally, the Mule runtime is going to understand that code and will execute that data. Mule event. Within the Mule event, you will contain a data inside variables or might be inside payload anywhere. That data accessing or transformation, we use this data view. In MuleSoft, mainly we do two things, data translation and data transformation. The translation is something the data which is converting from the source format to destination uh, format. When I say that, in my example here, SFTP location contains CSV file. That is the rows it will contain. Now we need to translate the data into Java object. Transformation, data transformation. It is converting the data from one file format to another file format. Maybe that um, CSV to XML or maybe CSV to JSON or uh, json to xml maybe json to text format so all this format if you want to transform we use this data view let's start uh, uh, we will see how we can implement that in a mule soft so it is going to be the a lot of topics it will be covered in the in this tutorials but today i'm going to show the basic idea how to use it and uh, what component you should use in the but actual coding and all we will be seeing in the coming videos so i'm going to create a mule project over here right click new mule project and i'm going to give data view samples is the mule application click on finish so this is the flow it is created now mule soft whatever the components it is providing everywhere you can use the data wave code but the most used component for the data transformation is the transform message here we are going to write a lot of a data view code so if you are going to use this component you are going to use data view code here now let me explain about how to use this component what are the different views in this uh, data view and um, how to use it so the first thing is this is one of the connector right if I take another connector logger or anything, as soon as I put this component in the flow, 
you can see that it is having the display name on the on the property but in the transfer message you will not have the display name on that what will happen if i want to rename this name you need to double click or right click on this component and say that uh, rename and say that over here um csv2 json or something that is how we can change that then select over here i will discuss about these views first of all as soon as you select this component in the uh, properties you can see there are four views one is input output and there is a visual graph over here to drag and drop the fields from here to here that means from the input to output and then the fourth part is output payload where you can write a data view code over here so that that are the four views now there are over here three buttons over here if you select this graphical show graph graphic and uh, graphics that means this graphical view that is a visualization is going to show when you click on this it will be visible only the three options input output and data view code and when you select this you can see input and output over here so let's come back over here the graphic view now what is this input the input is in our case now whatever the csv file is coming that will store it in a input data view sorry input uh, mule event which is going to contain payload variables and attributes the output you are going to prepare a java object for sending the data to the salesforce so that java object will be now in output format now here that is a output event i can say so we can drag and drop the fields if we know the what are the fields are coming and all you can configure them and drag and drop we'll see that in the coming videos how to drag and drop and all so let's understand these fields now then over here you have an output payload so whatever you want to construct output payload that code you can write it over here not only output if you want to build attributes also you can click on add new target select attributes over here click on ok so you can write a data view code over here i can say status colon i will say 200 so if you want to build that attributes also you can do that you can see now drag and drop if you want to select the payload code you can see from here if you want to see attributes code you can select from here now we want to create a variable click on add new target you can see the variable over here now we can't see the payload and attributes because of each mule event is going to contain only one payload and one attributes but you can have a multiple variables i can say test variable so from here you can see that and you want to edit this you can select the target whatever you want to edit you can edit from here or if you want to edit the variable you can select this and select this current target i will say that variable one i will rename that variable doing this you can write a code over here and if you don't like to use this code anymore or this variable you can delete by clicking on over here okay that is about how to use it here. Now, other than that, I'm selecting the attributes over here. This code is going to store it in line here, but you don't like to keep it in line. You want to put this code into some file. Go to the edit over here. You can see the source code, it is in line or in a file. You can put that. I'll say that file attributes dot dws you can put that name and click on ok now this code is in a within the file from that file it is referring over here where is that file now it is under src main resource you can see now file attributes 
when I open it, the same code visible over here. I can change it over here. Um, I can say message, I can say success. So automatically, whenever I change this code, it will reflect in this data view. If I go to the attributes now, you can see it is going to reflect over here. Now, that is clear, right? Now, what is all about this code? That is what we are going to discuss. So, this is the data view code. If you are going to use the data view transform message over here, which is going to contain two parts over here. There is a line, above part is called a header, the below part called as a body. The header part is contained percentage of DW, which indicate this code is data view code. DW means it is a data view code. And version 2.0, that is a current version of the data view. Previously, it was 1.0, which is used for Mule 3 code. Now, output. Whatever the output format you want to generate, I want to convert into JSON. You will say that application slash JSON. If you want to convert into XML, application slash XML. Now my my application want to convert this object into Java object, so I can say that application slash Java. Then below part is body. Other than that, in a header part, you can create a variable. You can create a custom functions. You can import libraries. All those can be done it in a header part. In the body part, you are going to write a code which is mainly for converting your object into the output format. Maybe I want to convert the customer object which needs to be sent it to the Salesforce. That, what are the fields you want to keep it everything right? You can write a code over here. How to write that code? That we will be discussing in a coming video. So I'm going to talk about very basics in a data view. Writing a single line of a code to very complex also. So please follow my uh, channel so that you will see those videos in a coming days. So now it is clear, right? This view is important. Then you need to understand how to write a code over here. So main important is over here, header and body part so that when you should use and all you will be clear. So not only this component, we can use another component. Maybe if I use a set payload also, I can write a data view code over here. I can put it over here, the data view code. Maybe I can say that uh, message colon hello. Hello data view. I can write, this is also data view code. When you enable this function that makes that it is a data view functions it will understand that but you can write a single line of a code over here other than that you can write it what you have written in a data view transformation also by selecting this show graphical view you can do over here also but if you have any complex logic and all the transform message component is the best to use it in your applications not only this even if i use it request over here http request i select over here you can see that i can write some data view code over here also i can write some data view code over here also so every component will support the data view code in mule application you need to learn the data view language it's not a, so difficult it is easy i will make you understand so we will be seeing that how we can write a single line of a code some logics and some complex of implementation. Everything we will be seeing in the coming video. That's it for today. So just overview. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, network. Thank you.